Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I am back to teach to you or bring to you um, some lessons out of Romans chapter 1. I was kind of surprised I opened up to Romans chapter 1, but it is chock full of stuff. And I do pray and I have prayed that the Lord would help me to add only what he would have me to add. And I pray that that is what happens. Because <laughs> you know how we all have an opinion. And and do, I do sometimes add stuff that I say in my honest opinion. Because I don't want people to think that I think God told me that. Okay. Because I don't know for sure. You know, we all have the mind of Christ. We're supposed to, as we mature in the Lord and in the Word, our part of our mind that is the mind of Christ should be growing and growing. So what comes out of our mouth should reflect the mind of Christ. Okay, so keep that in mind too. All right, let's get started. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you once again to please let your Holy Spirit help me to interject anything you want me to whenever needed or wherever you want me to. In Jesus Christ's precious and holy name I pray. Amen and amen. All right, let's get started with verse 1, Romans 1 verse 1. This is called the Gospel Exalted. I am in the NASB on blueletterbible.org. O-R-G. Paul, a bondservant of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle, set apart for the Gospel of God. Remember, the word does say, he whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. We are free from the sins of the world. We're supposed to be free from worry and anxiety and free from our bad habits and freed from anything that weighs us down in the world, the worldly, worrying about money, worrying about uh, our child's future, worrying about our future, all that stuff. He whom the Lord sets free is free indeed, but we become bond servants or slaves to Jesus. We should want that. We should be that gladly. You should want to, you should love the Lord so much that you're, you, you just say, Lord, you tell me what to do and I'll do it. Somehow or another, with the help of your Holy Spirit, I will do it. You see what I'm saying? That's why he calls himself a bond servant. All right, let's move on. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I didn't know I'd be saying that. Verse 2. Paul writes really long sentences. So this is one big long run on sentence here at the beginning. Which he promised, he was set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, meaning Jesus, concerning the father's Son, which is Jesus, who was born of a descendant of David, or the footnote says, seed, born of the seed of David, according to the flesh. So he was born into flesh, who was declared the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. See, that proved, um, the footnote says, who was declared the Son of God with power as a result of the resurrection from the dead, according to the Spirit of Holiness. 
That's just spirit with a small s, but I think it should be capitalized. According to the spirit of holiness, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for his name's sake, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. Are you part of the called of Jesus Christ? Probably if you belong to my channel, you are. And if not, you got to go to my home channel and watch my little five or six minute video on how to be born again and get started on the path to righteousness. Okay, or the path of righteousness. So you too can be called um called be among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. Those are people who are born again, love him, and are following his path, narrow path to heaven. To all this same sentence, verse seven. To all, and, and yet they put a new paragraph. <laughs> it's kind of funny. To all who are beloved of God in Rome, called, remember this is the letter to the Romans. To all who are beloved of God in Rome, called as saints or holy ones, grace to you and peace. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. If you ever think, I'm not very holy. I'm not going to make it. I'm just not very holy. Well, you rebuke those thoughts right then and there. You keep asking for forgiveness when you mess up. And you keep asking for help to do better. Keep asking the Lord Jesus to fill you more with his Holy Spirit and kick that demon to the curb. Whatever it is, whatever bad habit you're having trouble with, don't, don't buy into this, I'm just not good enough. I just can't do it. Yes, you can. Not by yourself, though. You got to have the Holy Spirit's help because he's our helper. Jesus told the apostles, you go to that upper room, you wait over there, and you all pray and wait for the comforter and the helper. Okay, he called him the helper. He helps us to get rid of our sins. And you may have to get deliverance. And lots of us had to get rid of, I had to have deliverance. Demons can reside in us, even though we're born again. As we're walking on our long in our life, you know, we fall into this or that or the other. We open doors, sometimes totally unknowingly and innocently, and we get a demon from it or two, you know. So anyway, that's something you have to take care of, and I highly recommend Derek Prince. The deliverance videos, he will help you get rid of them, okay? You learn to kick them to the curb. You need to take care of that. All right, let's move on. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for adding that, because I'm sure he did. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. And I thank Jesus for you all. Because your faith is being proclaimed throughout the whole world. How about that? They must have thought it was amazing that the Romans would accept Jesus. Are your friends amazed and bewildered that you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Are you kidding me? And now they're all gone. Well, that's all right because you don't need them. We need Jesus. We need to go to heaven. You don't want to go to hell. So you did good and forget the friends. Okay? For God whom I serve in my spirit 
in the preaching of the gospel of his son is my witness as to how unceasingly I make mention of you. So Paul's telling them that he brags about them. Always in my prayers making requests, if perhaps now at last by the will of God I may succeed in coming to you. He wanted to go visit him, for right now he's having to write. For I long to see you, so that I may impart some spiritual gift to you, that you may be established. You see, it was always intended for the elders to lay hands on us to get the gifts. So don't beat yourself up if you don't go to a church, and I don't recommend it. Not anymore looking for an elder to lay hands on you because you don't know which ones are planted there by Satan. You can't trust them if you don't know them. Now, if you know someone that's godly and they're in your city, <laughs> you really know them because maybe you used to go to church with them and you've stayed in contact with them and whatever. You know... You may be able to trust someone like that. But for the most part, I would say don't let people lay hands on you. So this is how it was. You just keep asking Jesus for the gifts you want. Okay? Ask him to lay his hands on you. All right. So Paul wanted to go to Rome so that he may impart some spiritual gift to you. None of us are going to get them all that you may be established. And the footnote calls it strengthened. That is, that I may be encouraged together with you while among you, each of us by the other's faith, both yours and mine. This is why we need to stay connected to encourage each other. Like last night, I was not being very faithful, was I? That one video was not, you know, I thought, Lord, should I pull that down? I thought, well, no, I had other things in there that was good and uh, that I thought I needed to share. But I was, you know, I, I had a little weak moment there. The thought of, you know, having something wrong, uh, bad wrong. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm just going to refuse all treatment. But I thought this morning, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And if I just gave in and didn't let him have, didn't go through any of that treatment that makes you feel awful. But, I mean, I got to fight it. I got to fight it. If it's, if it's there, I got to fight it because the devil... Is not taking my life. And I will win. Because Jesus is on my side. All in the Father's will. The Father's will be done. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, let's move on. That's why we have to encourage each other. When one of us is down. Has a sickness. Has a problem in their marriage. You have a, a sick child, whatever it is, don't you hesitate to come on here and put a comment and ask people to pray. And I will put a video up asking others to pray. Because you know what? There is power in numbers. There is. And even though we can't all be in the same room holding hands and, and being all in one accord in one room, we can all be praying, whatever city we're in, whatever time zone. When you read this, when you read someone's prayer request, and you pray, the Lord takes all those prayers up as incense to his nostrils. They're, they're, they're in a bowl. That's in the book of Revelation. I read that just the other day. Okay, let me move on. I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that often I have planned to come to you. 
He's telling them, I'm trying, I'm trying to get there. And have been prevented so far, so that I may obtain some fruit among you also. And I'm sure he does not mean apples and oranges. I am sure he means the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I believe that's Galatians 5.22. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. But he wants to obtain some fruit among you also, even as among the rest of the Gentiles. Okay, he wants to see if they've got their fruit going on. You know what I mean? All right, I am under obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. I think he must mean the lost, barbarians, people who don't know yet. Or it could mean... Here, I'll pull it up. I know it means um, people that don't speak your same language. Barbarians. Okay, it's G915. Barbaros. Of uncertain derivation. It's an adjective. It means barbarian or barbarous. Okay. Uh, one whose speech is rude, rough, and harsh. That's one meaning. One who speaks a foreign or strange language, which is not understood by another. So see, that would mean a foreigner. All right, the third meaning is used by the Greeks of any foreigner ignorant of the Greek language, whether mental or moral. That's weird. Ignorant of the Greek language, whether mental or moral, with the added notion after the Persian War of rudeness and brutality. The word is used in the New Testament without the idea of reproachfulness. Okay, that's kind of weird. So, it could just mean one whose speech is rude and rough or one who is a foreigner. All right, let's go back. This is a kind of a long verse, chapter, but there's a lot in it. There's, there's a whole lot in it. So, let's keep going. All right, so he's eager to come preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I remember the very first t-shirt I ever made. I wrote that all out on it. <laughs> you had to actually stop my pastor was at the door and I was coming out you know people like to shake their hands and he was he was reading my shirt I could see him <laughs> I don't know it was kind of funny because of the look on his face I don't under I don't know what he was thinking but anyway it was kind of funny to me but that was the very first t-shirt I ever made was that let us not ever be ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. And like he says, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So, even though today there are many Jews, people, People who say they are Jews, but are not. Let us remember there are a lot of them that are Orthodox Jews waiting for their real Messiah. 
And I honestly believe this is important. There are scriptures in the Word of God that speak specifically to the Jews. I am convinced this is where people with the post-tribulation rapture get their ideas. They say that, uh, okay, there's the parable of the wheat and the tares. Let them both grow together because if you pull the tares out, you might pull the wheat out while you're doing it because they look alike. Okay, but then when they're grown, they're told to pull out the tares and burn them and then get the wheat into the barn. I am convinced that that's talking about the Jews who never believe in Jesus, so they're never raptured. But he protects them somehow through the tribulation and then the tares are taken out of here. And then they're brought out. And when Jesus comes and sets his foot on earth, that is his second coming after the tribulation, the great tribulation, he sets up his millennial reign. That's in the book of Revelation. And how anybody can say, we don't have a thousand years to go through yet. They're not remembering and, and I've been reading, I've been studying on this. Because someone sent me a video of a man who's just thoroughly convinced, and others, that we've already gone through the thousand years. And, and they explain what years they think were the thousand. And listen, if you run into any of that, forget about it. Because let me tell you why. The Lord created the world in six days. And on the seventh day, the Lord rested. Even though there will be humans, the Jews, and probably some others that, that uh, when they see Jesus coming in the clouds with power and glory and takes the multitude too large to number, they're going to be like, oh crap. I should have believed. And they're going to turn. And they're going to believe. But it will be too late. And they're going to have to either hide well. Or they'll lose their head for Jesus. Because they'll believe. Okay, that's how come there's going to be people who believe. That will end up dying for Jesus. Because they saw him in the clouds. Do you see? Otherwise, if at the first rapture they see him in the clouds with power and great glory, why wouldn't they convert and everybody go in the second rapture? Then the book of Revelation goes on to talk about how through the bowl judgments and the trumpet judge, why would we need the bowls and the trumpet judgments if everybody was born again and went to heaven? No. They're still evil. The evil people will never concede because their hearts are seared and their consciences are like stony cold dead serving the devil. They're the evil factions of this world that are creating the new world order and that is why the Lord pours out his bull judgments, his trumpet judgments, and uh, there will be born-again people who hide out. So, and he will protect the Israelites who have not died. Because maybe they're praying Psalm 91. I, I mean, I don't know how, but the Lord can do anything he wants to, right? So there's people that are going to be left over when the Lord sets his feet on Mount Zion. There's a great earthquake. The ground splits. Anyway, after all that, he sets up his millennial reign. Because there are scriptures that talks about people who will rule and reign with Christ. I'm not, I'm not for sure which group it is. I don't think it's the bride of Christ. I think it's those who died for him and are resurrected 
and they rule and reign with Christ a thousand years. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, that's like a sermon in its own self, but uh, so he's not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, in it, the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. So remember that. We live by faith. Everything we go through, we use faith to get through it. Faith to faith. It takes faith to believe the scriptures that we will be protected and no plague will enter into our dwelling. The way they're locking this place down, I believe it. But anyway, I believe it because of the scriptures. And people who live in their own home just need to use common sense and not be going out. If there are any gatherings anywhere, stay six feet away from them if you have to go to the store. There, that's probably the only thing going to be open is stores. Let's see, Max mentioned a few things. Anyway, I think it was him. Um, sporting events are closing. Disneyland. Wow. Probably all amusement parks. Well, they're not open now anyway. Most of them only open in the summer. We'll have to see by then. We got to live day to day right now. Things are changing every day. Let me move on. All right. Now, this section is called unbelief and its consequences. Now, listen closely and share this with everyone you know who's once saved, always saved believer. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because that which is known about God is evident within them for God made it evident to them for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse. People should be able to see through nature that there is a God who created all of this. I mean, how can you possibly... See everything that goes on and think that there is a supreme almighty being that put this all together. Moving on. For even though they knew God, they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations, or some would say futile, but they became futile, I say futile, in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So you can come to know the Lord through salvation, being born again, going to church a couple of years. I mean, I know someone personally. I know he changed. I know he was different. He wanted to be in church every time the doors were open. He read the word. He wanted to learn. He wanted to serve. And he turned away. And his foolish heart became darkened. 
professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. We could substitute that for exchange the glory of the incorruptible God for a television set, for a computer, and the things they could see through it, and video games that took all their time away. Okay, moving on. Or other things. It could be getting into horse race betting or playing poker with the fellas and you get into it and the next thing you know, you're a gambler. But you were born again. You were baptized. You went to church for a while. You were reading your Bible. But some guys at work invited you to a poker game and there it went. You weren't strong enough because you didn't get intimate with Jesus. Therefore God gave them over in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Now back then, that's what they did. Nowadays, it's technology. It's football, sports. It's a lot of things. We have way more to worship, so to speak, than they had back then. Unless they worshipped every bug and every kind of snake and every kind of reptile and every kind of bird. I mean, yeah, there was plenty of them. But anyway, moving on. For this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions. For their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way also, the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another, men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. I don't need to explain that. And just, and see, and some people don't do that, but they might fall for their secretary or how about their boss at work? Yeah, my second husband got carried away with his boss who was an RN. He was an LPN. He had become an LPN and she was training him for his job. Yeah. They're married now. Okay. <clears throat> and just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, and he did the whole time we were together, that we went to church. <laughs> Both, my second and third husband. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, so they used to, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper, being filled with all unrighteousness. <coughs> Excuse me, let me get a sip of water. being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, 
murder, strife, deceit, malice. They are gossips. Gossips. The Lord put gossips in with murder, strife, deceit. What is strife? Arguing back and forth with people. Could deceit, malice, that would be fighting of any kind. The greed, evil, full envy. Now, there might be people who are only guilty of unrighteousness because they aren't staying on the narrow path. They're on the wide path that the world is on. And maybe they're guilty of murder. How? Did they kill somebody? No, but they hate someone. They're guilty of murder in their heart. They don't have to necessarily be guilty of all of this. Remember, when you're guilty of one thing, you're guilty of them all. That's what he said about the law. But these are things we have to not do. None of us. We can't be wicked, greedy, evil, full of envy. We can't hate people. We can't have strife. We have to stay in peace as much as we can. That doesn't mean you can't rebuke someone firmly. That doesn't mean you're causing strife. If they come back at you, you just you know, say, I said my peace. Deceit, malice, they are gossips, slanderers, haters of God. They become haters of God. Insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, Without understanding, they're untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful. And although they know the ordinance of God, they know the ordinance of God. These are not lost people. These are born-again people. They know the ordinance of God. That's, that's what God wants us to do to obey. Jesus gave us two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. Who's your neighbor? Everybody. Everybody. Jesus gave the man who said, but Lord, who is my neighbor? He gave the parable of the Good Samaritan. How the guy, the, the two religious men, walked on by like, oh, I don't need to touch that. The third man was a Samaritan. And he helped that man up. Got him on his donkey. Took him to an inn. Paid two denarius, I believe it was, or silver coins. Anyway, quite a bit. Said, so take care of this fella, and when I come back, if the cost is more, I will pay it. Don't even know the guy from Adam. Okay? That is our neighbor. You help your neighbor the best you can. You don't have to know them. You don't have to know why they got beat up. You don't have to know their history to help them out. If they need food, they need clothes, they need money, they need whatever, and you could contribute and help them? Think of the Good Samaritan. He didn't know that guy from Adam. He didn't know his history. He didn't know if he was a liar. He didn't know if he was a Jew. He didn't know him. And yet he picked him up and he helped him. I pray that each and every one of you will think about that the next time somebody needs help. 
All right, the last verse. Let's see, 31 was without understanding, untrustworthy, they're unloving, they're unmerciful. Verse 32 says, and although they know the ordinance of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. Yeah, they don't want to be alone in their sin. They give hearty approval to the others doing the same things. That is so sad. How anyone can hear the gospel of the Lord. Start going to church. Well, they go to church. They hear the gospel. They accepted it. They got baptized. They were so on fire. And then the devil just pulled them right back into the world. And they fell for it. Anyway, I hope that something I said touched your heart and will help you to be all that much more ready for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is coming. He said he would. We believe it. Faith. From faith to faith. You go through it. We take our hits. We're going to be hit, attacked, oppressed. The word says we would be persecuted. That's another word. We go through it faith by faith with the help of the Lord and His Holy Spirit. You keep praying for more Holy Spirit. I do. I don't care if you're already filled, praying in tongues. We can all use more and more and more. Full and overflowing. It's just the lifestyle. It's the way we're supposed to be. Wanting more and more. I don't know what more to add. So I say I will plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection over myself and over each and every one of you, your computers, your internet connections. I hope that this message will get shared with anyone that it could possibly help. In Jesus' name, I pray for that. Okay, protect yourselves, keep looking up, have faith in Psalm 91, no worry, the Lord said, we do not worry, worry will not add a single day to your life, okay, with that I'll say, bye for now, I'll talk to you later.